Most people know the household names of Babe Ruth, Tom Brady, and Larry Bird. But today I'm going to tell you about the mysterious figure who took the Hollywood golf game by storm in the 1930s. His name was John Montague. He was a mysterious man who would never talk to reporters. But why was he mysterious? What was he hiding? These are the questions we're going to answer on today's 30 for 30. We start today's story where many stories do, at the beginning. Laverne Moore was born in 1903 to a blue collar family. Growing up he stood out from his older brother and younger sister as an energetic, quick thinking young man. He would spend hours upon hours developing his body using beans in his attic as a jungle gym of sorts. He was always working out or playing sports as a child. Growing up he excelled at baseball, football, basketball, skiing, pool, and golf. But out of all of these sports, golf would make him the most famous. As a seven-year-old, he found a golf ball in the street, made a makeshift golf club, and destroyed the window of a drugstore. His father later bought him his first set of clubs, and he began to train with his older brother, Harold. But the story becomes fascinating in 1930, when Laverne Moore's life would change forever. Country Club. Seems like it must have been the greatest place in the world to play golf. Johnny Weissmuller, who was Tarzan, was there. Bing Crosby was there. Oliver Hardy was there. This was Hollywood in the 1930s. A place where everybody went to be discovered. A perfect place for one man to disappear. August 5th, 1930. Ken Han was closing up his roadside speakeasy in the Adirondack town of Jay, New York, when four armed men turned up and held up his restaurant. They tied them all up and, and robbed the restaurant. There was a high-speed chase and, and a crash, and the driver died, and money was fluttering all around the ground. Laverne Moore was in another car with another guy, and they escaped poof off into the night. Laverne Moore disappeared. Meanwhile, the golfing life in Hollywood went on. A fellow by the name of John Montague showed up. He started just playing golf on the public courses there, and he was very, very, very good. No matter what kind of golfer you were, he would set up a bet with you. He would say, all right, I'll hit the ball into the woods on my drive every hole, and you hit the ball where you hit it, and then we'll see who wins the hole. Soon, John was rubbing elbows with the matinee idols at Lakeside Country Club. Ben Crosby was, was a member at Lakeside, and he played with Montague a lot. And uh, they would argue about things, and Crosby would always want some kind of a handicap. And finally, one day, Montague said, I could beat you using only a baseball bat, a shovel, and a rake. A straight drive, an accurate chip, and a putt executed with the head of a rake like a pool cue, John Montague made birdie. He became a celebrity among celebrities. When Grantland Rice played Lakeside with John, he was so impressed, he published a story about the curious fellow who Rice claimed would beat the likes of Bobby Jones. All of a sudden, there were like three or four stories out there about him. He didn't like people taking his picture. When they would take a picture and he would hear the click, he would go over and, and offer them money for the film. By this point, Time Magazine, a new periodical of the day, got curious. They had a photographer hiding in a tree, and they ran two pictures of John Montague along with the story. There were a couple of policemen way back in New York State, and they said, there he is. There's the guy that we've been looking for all along. Laverne Moore, the missing robber from Hannah's, had been finally discovered. 
He'd been living as John Montague, a Los Angeles golf hustler. He was now facing charges for armed robbery. A media circus erupted. The case seemed to build and build in the car that crashed and flipped over it was a set of golf clubs, and they were, they were Laverne Moore's golf clubs. Hollywood money bought Hollywood defense. Montague's attorney, James Noonan, had a reputation in upstate New York for getting gangsters off the hook. He treated the trial as a PR stunt. His first witness was Laverne Moore's mother. She claimed that her son was in bed that night, and he got up there and he said, I was in bed, I was sleeping. The testimony gave the jurors an out to just say, let's get this out of here and, uh, and make it not guilty. And uh, so they did. He was going to go off and, and win everything. He was going to make millions and millions of dollars. The trial behind him, John Montague went after that fortune in golf, but fortune was unkind to the lakeside legend. He never won a professional tournament, never made a cut. His game deteriorated completely. He died alone in Los Angeles in 1972. At the end, he, he was living in a flea bag Hollywood motel. I think that's the, the saddest part of, about Montague because there, there was something there that could have been great. He didn't have the head or the heart to carry it out. The exciting life of Laverne Moore, or John Montague, comes to a sad conclusion. He was never the same after the trial. He put on weight and lost focus. On November 14, 1937, Montague played his first public exhibition match with Babe Ruth and Babe Dickerson. They could barely play because of the massive crowd. After the ninth hole, they put down their golf clubs and quit. The one bright spot in Montague's life after the trial was secretly marrying widow Esther Plunkett, who had two kids. This was one of the only good things that happened to him after the trial. He tried to make it in the U.S. Open, but couldn't make the cut. He got a sponsorship from Wilson Sporting Goods for a tour of exhibition games in Hawaii, the Philippines, and Japan. But they ended up dropping him when he returned to the States. Montague's wife died in 1947, and his life quickly declined. Within two years of his wife's death, he was arrested for drunk driving and had a heart attack. In 1972, he had another heart attack that would end his life. His body lay unclaimed for a week. Finally, a friend identified the body as Montague and arranged for a funeral service. Only 29 people attended. The mystery of Montague, the legend at Lakeside, Laverne Moore. Whatever his name really was, he was an amazing golfer who never lived up to his potential. The story of the fugitive golfer will never be forgotten.